Hello everyone. Let's continue our discussion on the flow. So the next step after the optimized placement stage is to do a timing analysis with ideal clocks. The reason to do is to get an idea of how does the timing how does the timing looks like at this stage. Because if there are any discrepancies or any any accidental wrong placement done by done by the user or done by anyone else or done by the tool tool that can be estimated right right away over here. And we can do some fixes because if we identify those issues, those problems at the later stage of the of your of your uh, physical design flow that might lead to problem and you might not even revert back to make those changes okay so it's a very good idea to do a, a to do a timing analysis at the placement stage itself with ideal clocks assuming that there are no clocks or basically assuming there are clocks but there are it, it's not routed yet assuming the clock the, the, the latency or the time required for the clock to reach from this port to this port or to this port to this port it's zero so assuming that we'll do a timing analysis or only on the data path okay so the timing analysis looks something like this your combinational delay is the flip flop one clock to queue delay plus the estimated wire delay plus the delay of this particular cell plus the delay plus the estimate wire delay of between 1 and 2 plus the delay of 2 plus the wire estimate delay between uh, 2 and flip flop 2 so this will be your combinational delay Similarly, for this section, the combinational delay will be the clock to queue flip flop one plus the delay of one since there is no wires and there is an abutment over here. Still, there will be a minimal minimal RC wire, but that's very negligible. So it will be the delay between a delay between flip flop one clock to queue, the delay of one and delay of two. So this will be the value of the combinational delay. This combinational delay has to meet certain criteria under the setup timing analysis with ideal clocks. And the criteria is it has to be less than the time period minus setup time minus setup uncertainty. So details of this setup timing analysis with ideal clocks is being done in the in the detail section of this uh, of this course, but not over here because we are giving an overview of the physical design flow. So we will be doing a detailed analysis of how did we arrive actually to this this particular equation. We'll be doing all those in in the upcoming videos in the next sections. In this section, we are giving you just an overview. So this particular combinational delay, we make sure that at placement stage or at optimized placement stage we are actually meeting this condition or if we are not meeting this condition we are violating this condition by a, a marginal number not by a huge number okay so for example your commercial delay is expected to be less than the the time period which is one nanosecond or, or the, the the clock period which is one nanosecond minus the setup time 0 0.01 nanosecond or uh, or 10 picosecond minus the setup uncertainty which is 0 0.09 nanoseconds or 90 picoseconds so in, in in the detailed video we will be explaining why do we need the setup time why do we need this uncertainty so basically these uncertainties because of jitter there are clock jitters and this setup time is basically the internal flop delay so we'll be talking about all those things in the in the upcoming sections in general the combinational delay should be less than 900 picoseconds and that's expected if it is not if it should be violating it if 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 let's say commercial delay is is not nine nine hundred picoseconds but one ns still it's okay it's violating by hundred picosecond okay so that's what we expect in that range and not uh, not to a very huge number so after we have done with the timing analysis uh, we get an idea or overview of of how does the timing looks like and we try to maintain the same uh, in, around the same timing in the further steps as well so further steps will include some more changes in the circuitry let's look into them but before that other than the timing and other than the setup timing analysis we also do a data slew check data slew check basically specifies the data transition check the transition number or the what is the signal transition at the input and output of any of this logic so whatever transition you see over here and whatever transition you see at the output are those within minimal range and we come up with some range in this case we have taken a range of 20 picoseconds to 400 picoseconds there are advantages and disadvantages of having a very low transition and a very high transition that's why we, the data transition is expected to be certain limit if the data transition goes below 20 picosecond there is a problem that 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 uh, within a very short period of time there is a huge current demand and that might lead to power overshoot and if the data transition goes beyond 400 picosecond there is a huge amount of time during this transition time there is a huge amount of time period where your both NMOS and PMOS are on 
that will lead to new short circuit current so this will this all will be a uh, talk we will talk about all this in detail in the upcoming sections or in the detailed section where in, in the same course currently we we'll look into a way we check across the across the complete circuitry across the estimated wires and check the transition for and check for the transition for this between between these wires and those transitions should be within certain limits and we do we do this for complete circuitry we check the transition from d in 2 to flip flop 1 flip or 1 on and so on we do it for all the data parts okay and that's a very important check because this still gives us an idea that whether a cell is properly located or not for example if this particular cell was accidentally placed somewhere over here you would have seen a huge transition because there is no direct connection there is no direct connection possible from this point to this point and the reason is you have this big big block sitting over here so we should be buffering we should be uh, uh, routing from this point till this point with the help of some repeaters and whether that is being done or not that can be checked with the help of data slew check or data transition check okay so that was the data transition check after we have done with the basic timing analysis with ideal clocks on the optimized placement stage the next step is to do a clock tree synthesis so but now we are entering into the clock world so the clock tree by clock tree synthesis we mean that this clock clock one or for example this clock one should be reaching its respective flops for example this clock one has got its connection to flip flop one flip flop two flip flop uh, the yellow color flip flop one and the and there is one more flip flop two so so basically this clock has to reach each and every flop at at, at the respective time that is one thing and there is second thing that the skew there is a concept of skew where we expect the clock to reach at this flip flop and this flip flop at the same time that is the expectation so we have a detailed lecture on clock tree synthesis in a separate section there's a detailed course on clock tree synthesis you might want to have a look into that course uh, but let me give you a brief overview of the clock tree synthesis so for example let's take one clock this particular clock one is expected to reach to reach to flip flop one flip flop two flip flop one and flip flop two at the same time Th that's that's basically the skew if, if it is not flip flop one and flip flop two at least a flip flop one flip flop two which is sitting over here it is expected to reach at the same time and the reason is if, if if it doesn't if it doesn't comes at the same time there will be a skew and that skew might lead to timing violations we will, we, the, the, all this has been uh, uh, explained in a very detailed manner in the in, in a separate uh, in a separate uh, uh, clock tree synthesis video you might uh, uh, want to have a look into that but this is the concept okay and and no, not in the clock tree synthesis not only we just route this particular uh, this particular thing in a different fashion but we also buffer them and the reason is with the, the the difference between the clock routes with and without buffering for example this was the case without buffering in this case you see the wire length is very huge so the number of resistance and capacitances that this clock port has to charge that becomes very huge and as a result of that you see huge transitions so we need repeaters as we said that anyone any person who is sitting over here if he sends a signal if he, if he sends a shout that shout has to reach the clock pin of the flip flop too without any deterioration so to, to, uh, to maintain the originality of the signal we add some repeaters in the path so if you see this this particular signal now gets recon reconstructed with this particular buffer and it is sent again it gets reconstructed again with this buffer it is sent again and, and finally it reaches the flop and similarly for the other clock too also for the clock too it's it sends a signal this buffer uh, reconditions it or reconstructs it it sends it again to this buffer this buffer again reconstructs it and it, it is sent again and then it is sent to its respective flops so all this has been talked about we have talked about all this in detail about the wire length about the number of buffers that are placed in the path we have talked about all of them in a separate section in a separate in a separate course uh, of clock tree synthesis and the next step uh, after we have done with the clock tree synthesis there is one more step that we need to do is the clock net shielding because clock nets are the most critical nets and they have to be shielded they have to be protected from the outside world Okay. so what we'll do is we'll talk a bit about clock net shielding uh, in the next video since I'm already running out of time so let's try to talk more about clock net shielding in the next video thank you